raises its ugly head. Interesting enough, wouldn't that be the theme that our LGBTQIA uh, lowercase p, and that p is for pedophilia because that has a thing uh, to do with it as well. Isn't it interesting that they would use that word pride in order to designate a whole month because it is pride, arrogant pride that goes against the very nature of God that would have man rebel against God in this manner. We have become a nation of whores before the Lord because we have gone on to just entertain any of our fleshly desires at the sake of denying the power of God, almighty God, the one who made us. I promise you, we will be dealing with the truth of God's word, God's word tonight and throughout the rest of the month will be prevalent and very evident because it's very important that you guys know this is not Max opinion. This is the word of God going against the adversary, the devil, and the way that the devil is manipulating and grooming not only adults, but our children to accept a lifestyle that he never intended. For the record, there are only two genders that God has ever created, male and female, and they have designated roles, they have designated body parts, and they have designated agendas that God has put in place. We'll be exploring all those things, and we'll see how the LGBTQ agenda is one that actually compromises God's word in order to entertain a reprobate mind. Now come on and journey with me because when you finally break it on down, it's the pride. Pride is a celebration, yeah that's what it's about. Last year we couldn't meet up, but this time it's allowed. With my queer friends and allies, now it's time to go out. Ooh, ooh, we get to do it all oh, yeah. yeah. It's Pride again. We've been waiting so long. It's Pride again. For so much to go wrong. It's Pride again. Santa combo for queers. This is our St. Patty's Day. Acting sloppy because we're gay. It's our first Pride together. And it's also our last. Cause even for lesbians, we moved in way too fast. But we're still hosting a gay brunch. And Frying Eggs got us hot. Ooh, ooh. Tonight we'll break up again. It's inclusive and it's great. It's right again. But who let in all these straights? It's right again. Gender is just clothes. Let's go eat some Chick-fil-A. Nothing matters anyway. We're just happy that we're queer. Romans 1, verses 18 through 28. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the corruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. 
Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Are you nervous? Yes. How come? Do I look scary? Do you know what I am? No? I'm a drag queen. <laughs> and I know why you're speaking like that. Like what? Like you look like you would speak in a different way. Yeah? But now you're speaking different. So <laughs> now I know we're a boy. I'm a boy. <laughs> you're right. I'm a boy. Wait, I... <laughs> what? You didn't think I was a boy? I've been thinking. You thought I was a girl? I've been thinking. No, I'm a boy. Point. How do you feel about that? A little bit weird at all, but like like a little interesting. So you're gay? I am. Everybody should try drag at least once. It's really fun. Even kids? Yeah. There's actually quite a few kids that are starting to do drag. Do you ever wear sparkly things? Not really. Not really? How come you don't wear anything sparkly? Because I think some people at school make fun of me. Well, those people, their opinions aren't important. Do people ever make fun of you? When I was younger, people did, but that's because, you know, kids do that. Kids can be mean. There's been a few times that I've encountered people that weren't quite as nice and were a little bit judgmental. I know what to do. What? I know what to do. Just don't speak because then they think you're like a real one. Don't you think I should just be myself? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever wish you were a girl? I don't. I like uh, being a boy, but I enjoy dressing up like a girl. I'm pretty much not weirded out now. You're not? Yeah, Good. I'm comfortable. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 through 15. Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hand on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 10. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the death of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off, and cast them from thee. 
it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Is there any doubt we are in a war? The battle is raging every minute of every day, and each day we are given a choice to engage the enemy or stand by and watch as over 2,300 innocent lives are extinguished every single day in the United States. When a young woman finds herself in an unplanned pregnancy, she may feel that there are no options, that there is nowhere to turn and no one to talk to, Abortion may be the only solution that seems right to her at the time, but there are options. Saving babies and souls is our mission. This mission starts with the clinic staff and their desire to witness to each and every girl that comes into their clinic. Our evangelism tool, The Invitation, encourages and educates the clinic staff and volunteers to openly share the gospel with clients on a daily basis. After being sent to over 500 clinics in 2020, over 2,100 pregnancy clinic directors, staff, and volunteers have now been trained to share the gospel. Fearlessly sharing the gospel to a young girl in an unplanned pregnancy is not an easy task. But consider the stakes. We know it is worth the fight. And we are seeing the fruits of those efforts as 370% more salvations are occurring in those clinics who have used the invitation. A picture is worth a thousand words, and when a client can see her baby thriving and growing inside of her, it changes everything. An ultrasound session allows the client to see her baby and realize that it is a child who deserves life. That is why in 2020, Preborn stationed 44 ultrasound machines and provided over 41,000 ultrasound sessions across the nation. Witnessing a changed life, a redeemed soul, and a saved baby are encouragement to keep going, to do more, and to continue the fight. Because of your partnership with Preborn, we are celebrating 31,407 babies saved in 2020 with 6,500 commitments to Christ and over 60,000 pregnancy tests. We thank you for the ever-growing impact you are making for God's kingdom. Preborn, glorifying Jesus Christ by operating, equipping, and leading pregnancy clinics to save more babies and souls. Two transgender high school runners, well, they're kicking up dust in Connecticut, taking the top spots at the state girls' championship, leaving parents wondering if they have an unfair advantage. Terry Miller and Andrea Yearwood dominating the competition at the girls' track and field championships in Connecticut earlier this month. Coming in first and second place, respectively. The girls' athletes are at the physical disadvantage compared to the transgender female. They have naturally testosterone within their body that has been proven to give a physical advantage in sports. Track is number 100 on my list of concerns as a father of a transgender daughter. I'm talking about raising a child for a life. And so is it fair that that child is excluded? Is it fair that, that child doesn't feel like they have a place to belong? It allows her to be who she wants to be, and I think that has a little bit more weight than just winning a medal. Follow your heart, like don't let other people determine what you do in life. Let's just play devil's advocate for a moment and just imagine that you were both born girls 
and then all of a sudden you had uh, two boys who identified as being girls and they said hey we're gonna be on your team and maybe now you're not performing as well because they are better I'm not gonna discourage you or try to say oh it's not fair and it was just pushed me to run faster I'd be happy for them because they get to do what they want they're happy so then that should in turn make me happy and they're brave they're just different exactly. from everybody Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through 27 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them Psalm chapter 139 verses 13 through 17 for thou hast possessed my reins thou hast covered me in my mother's womb I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect and in thy book all my members were written which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them how precious also are thy thoughts unto me O God how great is the sum of them Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 through 20 this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness but ye have not so learned Christ June is Pride Month, and there's no missing its kickoff. Rainbow flags are everywhere. There are t-shirts and hats, Apple has a watch, Absolute Vodka has a special bottle. But this year, the landscape has shifted. You are going to get rainbow vomit on everything across corporate America. Some corporations stepping into a fierce fight over transgender issues. It plays out in state houses. When you bow your heads in prayer, you see the blood on your hands. And on cable news. The same people who encourage minors to have life-altering hormones and surgery on their genitalia and even begin transitioning without parental consent, they have done and are doing enormous damage to young people. Okay, these are like naked people in shirts. Its stock price dropped more than 15% in two weeks. I got some Bud Lights for us. Bud Light so, marketed a customized can featuring transgender influencer madness, Dylan Mulvaney, we triggering an outcry. Sales dropped nearly 30%. There are calls to boycott Kohl's because of its pride-themed baby clothes and North Face, the outdoor company, as well. We like Jude verses 4 through 7. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ I will therefore put you in remembrance though ye once knew this how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believed not and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire 
Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Jesus! 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 I don't 